So I will try to give a brief overview of uh, the AI safety landscape. Technical AI safety research, one way to define it is it's research within the fields of machine learning and artificial intelligence with the aim to help us to ensure that AI systems actually continue to do what we want them to do. Now, why might we think that's a problem, uh, something we need to do research on? Let's look at an example. Here you see uh, a screenshot of a Flash game. It's called uh, Coast Runners. Um, it's an example due to OpenAI. And it's an easy game. Uh, if you're a human and play it, um, you see, oh, it's, it's a racing game. I control this boat. And so my goal is to win the race, finish the course ahead, uh, ahead of the other players. And the game also has an in-game score, um, so you can score points by moving through certain objects um, along the course, such as these green ones um, behind me. Now, say you want to design an artificial agent that is good at winning this game. How might you go about this? One idea you might have is, let's use reinforcement learning. So I guess most of you um, are familiar with reinforcement learning, so very briefly, reinforcement learning is one of the currently hot frameworks in AI and machine learning. The idea just is um, when we have an agent that acts in some environment, it can choose one of several actions in each time step, and what's a way to have such an agent learn um, what we want it to learn? Well, what we can do is in each time step, we give the agent some numerical reward signal, and then we have ways to have the agent learn a policy for choosing actions in each time step that maximizes the time discounted expected sum of total rewards. And so we might think, well, that's something we can do here, um, and a natural choice for the reward signal to use might be just this in-game score. Turns out that if you do this, if you try to run a reinforcement learning agent um, that optimizes for this in-game score, what you will get is an agent that doesn't actually finish the course and the game at all. It goes off track and just goes in a circle um, in an area where there are a lot of these objects um, it can uh, move through to score points, and it even crashes into various obstacles in order to optimize its timing um, so that it can move through these um, tokens that give points just as they reappear. And that's, of course, not what we had in mind. Um, we wanted an agent that's good at winning this game, and so um, we have a problem. And to be clear, the issue is not that this agent is bad at optimizing for the reward signal we used. This agent scores more points in this game than a human player would commonly score. The issue is that we picked a reward signal that optimizing for which didn't actually get us what we had in mind. And it was somewhat hard to anticipate this. Um, we might think, well, this in-game score, it seems like a reasonable thing to optimize for, but then it turns out, um, well, it isn't. The cost of such an error in, uh, error in, a, in a video game is, of course, uh, small. Um, we can simply see, oh, well, this doesn't work. Uh, let's try a different reward, reward signal. But clearly, this isn't something we want to happen in a real boat uh, or a self-driving car uh, or even an AI that, say, trades on the financial markets or maybe one day manages our electric grids or something like this. So AI safety is research aimed at ensuring that we avoid problems uh, such as this one. We can try to make this a bit more precise. One influential paper um, due to uh, researchers at uh, Google Brain, Stanford, uh, Berkeley, OpenAI, um, broke down this broad goal of AI safety into several sub-problems. Um, so they say, okay, here are a bunch of really concrete problems um, that are related to the cutting edge of current machine learning techniques, which we can work on and run experiments on today. And they defined these problems, uh, connected them to previous work, and also suggested some research directions for overcoming the problems and experiments one might run. I won't uh, go through them here uh, in detail. I will just briefly explain them using the example um, the authors used in the paper, which is a hypothetical cleaning robot. So the first problem they outlined is avoiding negative side effects. So there is an issue that often 
um, when an agent is very good at optimizing for something, even if we succeeded in picking something we actually want to optimize for, say the cleaning robot actually is very, very good at cleaning the house, we still want, usually we want um, to have some side constraints, some constraints the agent adheres to while optimizing this one thing. So for instance, the cleaning robot shouldn't uh, demolish your furniture in the course of uh, being very effective at cleaning your house. The second issue um, is avoiding reward hacking. So this is an issue that might um, arise, especially w once agents become increasingly complex and autonomous. Here the idea is once an agent is sufficiently um, complex and autonomous and its model of its environment includes its own reward signal, then the agent might find a way to optimize the reward signal by directly tampering with the way the reward is fed to the agent, which will no longer, which will break the correlation between the reward signal and what we actually want. So an example they use in the paper is, you can imagine a cleaning robot that gets a certain reward signal um, depending on how much dirt it sees. But once you give this agent the ability to control its visual sensor, it could simply switch off its visual sensor and then it doesn't see any dirt any longer and uh, gets the maximum reward all the time. But of course, this isn't what you want. The third problem um, is called scalable oversight. Here the idea is sometimes um, you might want to have uh, humans in the loop in some form uh, because you think um, some decisions are so high stakes we don't um, want to leave the decision about how to act um, to the agent uh, during, during training um, or maybe also during test time when it might do something very foolish. And, but of course, um, an issue is in order to still have an effective agent, we can't have humans in the loop all the time. A human can't uh, give feedback to any single decision the agent takes because the point of artificial intelligence is of course to automize things and to uh, increase our effectiveness through this. So are there ways to give very scarce feedback by humans that still make the agent um, learn uh, important um, aspects of its policy. The fourth issue, um, even if we succeed in all of these things, um, our agents um, still need to be trained. Um, and one aspect of training is exploration, that is sometimes an agent just needs to randomly or specifically pick some action and hasn't tried yet in order to see, well, how much reward does this yield us. And um, here also, of course, um, in sufficiently high stake settings, we don't want the agent to actually have to um, try out uh, something that has very bad consequences. So when you have a self-driving car, you, you want uh, the self-driving car to, to stay on the, on the lane without first having to crash uh, into another car um, to learn, oh, that's, that's not what I should do. The fifth problem um, is a quite fundamental problem, um, which is just, just the issue um, there can be differences between the training environment and the test environment. And how do we deal with this issue? So even if we have some agent that performs very well, that performed very well and is safe in the environment we trained it, there might be subtle differences between the training environment and the test environment. So we could imagine a cleaning robot that was uh, trained uh, in an office, uh, but now you want to deploy it in a factory, on a factory floor and maybe there are subtle issues, additional safety requirements um, it needs to adhere to there. And uh, can we find ways um, to overcome this problem to train uh, agents that uh, actually perform robustly and safely um, in a sufficiently wide um, um, array of environments? So um, in the talks uh, over the course uh, of this day, um, we will get some in-depth insights uh, into some research directions aimed at avoiding some of these problems. So I will just try to give a few uh, examples without going into detail what might we do to overcome some of these problems. One issue is, um, as the example in the beginning illustrated, it can sometimes be hard to actually specify a formal reward signal 
optimizing for which yields what we actually want. And an alternative approach we might take here is, well, maybe what works better is not if the human programmer has to specify the reward signal, but if a human expert just demonstrates the desired behavior and an agent could learn the reward signal that will work for reproducing that behavior. And this is the idea, um, this is Stuart Russell's idea of inverse reinforcement learning, dates back uh, at least to 2000. And recently there also have been some new developments um, in this framework. For instance, um, a paper on what's called cooperative inverse reinforcement learning. Here the rough idea is when we look at the way um, we teach some behavior to another human, often the most effective way to do this is not to demonstrate um, executing this behavior as effectively as possible, but rather to optimize our demonstration for their learning effect. Um, teaching demonstrations, they might be particularly slow or might emphasize particular aspects that are important or hard to learn and so on. And the broad idea is that cooperative reinforcement learning gives us a framework that uh, can reproduce this dynamics between a human teacher um, and a learning um, an AI agent that um, learns a reward signal from this teacher um, in a way that can perform better than just um, demonstrating the desired behavior um, as effectively as possible. Here is a recent paper um, collaboration between uh, OpenAI and DeepMind um, that um, illustrates um, that uh, yes, uh, sometimes uh, we can do a scalable oversight. Um, so I'm not sure if this uh, video will work. Ah, it, it will. Um, so um, this is um, what they uh, taught uh, this uh, artificial agent in the uh, environment to do to perform a backflip essentially. And the uh, remarkable um, uh, part uh, here is that um, this was done by showing snippets of um, candidate backflips essentially to uh, human uh, judges. And uh, they could then say which of the two snippets they saw um, was closer to the intended behavior of a backflip. And through this human feedback, um, only about one hour of human feedback in total, um, the agent was then able to use this feedback to learn to perform this uh, backflip we just saw. And so this demonstrates that at least uh, for some tasks, um, we can actually do with very minimal human feedback, um, learn um, desired behavior. And here again, it's, I guess it's really not clear if you instead had tried to specify a reward signal directly for uh, performing a backflip, uh, how would you have, have done this? Like, how can you write out a formal reward signal that uh, somehow correlates with how close a video clip is to a backflip? It's really crucial um, that we were able to use the judgments of the human um, observers here that could just intuitively see, well, which of two sequences is closer to a backflip. All of these examples we saw um, were essentially aimed at avoiding accidents. That is undesired behavior by um, an AI system that arises because we didn't foresee um, the consequences of um, how the um, the agent would act. But of course, there are also other aspects to safety. Um, for instance, we also need to think about security. That is a situation where there also is some adversary that might try to gain control of the system we deploy or to manipulate it in such way. And so of course, this has large overlap with computer security just in general, but there are also some security aspects that are specific to machine learning and might, be able, uh, might become uh, more important as we deploy machine learning systems to an increasing degree in the real world. One issue you might be familiar with are adversarial examples. Um, they are very well known from image classification, for instance, 
So as you might know, um, present machine learning systems can do image classification very well if they have been trained on a large data set of labeled images. Um, but one difference to say uh, humans who classify images is that small and for humans uh, even imperceptible perturbations in the image uh, can fool a very well trained um, um, artificial image classifier. And this paper demonstrates that this problem of adversarial examples, small changes um, which would make no difference to a human but which um, yield completely different behavior in a machine, um, in an artificial agent, um, also carries over to the reinforcement learning setting. So um, again, one thing current reinforcement learning systems uh, can often already do very well is play various video games such as uh, Pong, um, which you might be familiar with, so it's uh, just need to control these uh, sticks and avoid that the ball uh, leaves, the, leaves the screen. And um, so th they usually can do this very well. So here you see a, an artificial agent that has been trained and wins uh, 20 to zero against uh, this opponent. Um, if, uh, there is no, um, if there are no um, perturbations to the input, but then here, if you, the paper demonstrated, if you add some noise um, to the image, the machine learning system is fed, which would be no problem for a human. Um, the performance can uh, decrease dramatically. So here um, you see the score of um, the agent um, in this setting uh, with adversarial perturbation, which uh, performs much worse than without. Uh, the adversarial perturbation. And so we might need to think of ways to make machine learning systems more robust against, um, for instance, such adversarial examples. Again, clearly we don't uh, want um, someone to be able to change the behavior of a, of a self-driving car, say, um, in that way that um, there are like small perturbations to uh, the camera feed or something like this. Another problem uh, we can pose is say we don't succeed uh, with our safety efforts and something goes wrong, we want to retain um, our ability to intervene, um, for instance, to switch off the artificial agent. And one uh, worry we might have here is that, again, if we think of increasingly complex and autonomous agents um, whose model of the environment um, includes uh, maybe other agents and themselves, they might have an incentive to avoid being switched off because this diminishes the reward they get. And so we might need to think, um, can we modify the math mathematical frameworks we use um, in order to create agents that provably won't uh, have such an incentive to avoid being switched off or avoid being corrected in some other way um, while still performing very effectively. And there are some papers that have been produced uh, on this issue. Last but not least, um, there is also an issue of uh, privacy uh, when deploying machine learning systems that have been widely discussed. And again, this is of course a much larger issue, but there are some things that might be specific issues for machine learning systems. So think um, an example um, th this paper uses for motivation is think of a system that has been trained on, th on sensitive data, such as the medical histories of patients in a medical trial. One worry is that if you just publish this agent, someone through careful analysis of the model might be able to reverse engineer some of the data that has been used to train the agent. And we don't want this if the data used for training was very sensitive and should um, there are privacy concerns. And this paper um, suggested uh, a clever idea um, how to avoid this problem, they essentially said, okay, we can um, train a variety of uh, teacher systems um, using the sensitive data, which we then don't publish. Um, and then we use these uh, teacher systems in order to train a, um, another system, which um, we can publish and which we can't uh, reverse engineer the sensitive data from. While the issues I've discussed so far are very close to the cutting edge in uh, machine learning, 
Um, there are um, other research agendas for AI safety have been proposed as well. This is an example um, from the um, Machine Intelligence Research Institute, which uh, co-sponsored this, um, this workshop. And uh, they are taking this research ag agenda takes um, a bit of a different approach rather than looking at the present state of AI and machine learning and asking, well, what um, safety and security issues do we see arising here already? They take a step back and ask if our goal is a system that does optimal reasoning in some way to be um, made more precise, what mathematical tools will we need in order to specify what optimal reasoning even means and how executing um, such reasoning in a safe way, um, how we can guarantee this um, in some way. So they propose some um, more uh, mathematical um, issues they think we should investigate in order to ensure that um, AI remains uh, robust and safe. Um, for instance, you might think that novel issues in decision and game theory will arise once we have an environment with different um, artificial agents. They can, for instance, might be able to read each other's source code um, which might create a new dynamics which you don't see in games between uh, human players. And so maybe we need some extensions of decision and game theory that deal with the situation of, well, what happens and what's an optimal strategy um, for agents that can um, examine each other in ways um, that um, are not uh, known to us um, so far. These problems I've sketched, um, of course, aren't an exhaustive list of all the things we might be concerned with when we very broadly think about how can we make sure that artificial intelligence has um, the maximal positive social impact it could have. Um, here are the 23 principles um, of the Asilomar AI conference um, that were um, signed by a large number of researchers um, and you see um, there are, are a variety of issues, um, some of them related to the things I've talked about. Some of the things might pose other problems for technical AI safety I haven't talked about. Um, but as you can see, some of the things also concern, well, how should the AI community ideally work together? Um, how, what are the economic or legal consequences of deploying increasingly capable and autonomous artificial agents. And so clearly, um, in the end, this technical AI safety, this field I've sketched, um, will only be one part um, of our efforts to make um, artificial intelligence as safe and as beneficial as possible. We also need contributions from economics, social science, uh, and so on. But um, here we are focused on one aspect of this problem, the technical aspect um, and machine learning and AI research that might contribute to this overall goal um, to have as much positive impact um, as possible. So to sum up, um, the basic problem is that ensuring that AI agents actually do what we want them to do and so that we can be sure that deploying them will have beneficial consequences is a non-trivial problem, as we have seen. We can already see this today in simple environments such as video games, and this might become increasingly relevant and potentially problematic once we want to deploy increasingly complex systems in the real world. There are some specific technical problems uh, we can tackle in order to improve our ability to have AI agents do what we want. I sketched some of them. I also pointed to some research agendas and research directions that have been proposed and which uh, people from both top labs in industry and top groups in academia are already working on today. And this is like one part um, of a larger effort that also includes uh, contributions from other fields such as economics, social science, and so on. Thanks. Thank you.